<clears throat> All right. I will begin. Ahem. Ahem. Dear Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for these students, for the beautiful weather outside, and I just pray you help us to use this time wisely to review for the test Wednesday that uh, students would ask any questions that still remain for them as they're studying this material, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Questions? I got a joke. So you got, uh, there's a student researcher, right? And he's researching, <laughs> he's researching frogs. And he tells the frog jump, and the frog jumps, and then he, and then he takes the frog and he, he cuts a leg off of it. And then, he, and then he tells the frog jump, and the frog jumps again, and then he cuts the other leg off of it, right? And then he tells the frog jump, and the frog doesn't ju jump. And the other researcher goes, huh, I guess the, I guess the frog is deaf. <laughs> All right. Continue. So, that's actually not the funny part. The funny part is uh, another professor told this joke in his class, and then he had a student at. Okay. He had, he had a he had a student ask him, "If you cut both the legs off of a frog, does it make it deaf?" Yeah. But that's what the student asked this professor. <laughs> Maybe it does. Okay. So, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that student. I mean, there, there's a charitable interpretation and an uncharitable interpretation of that event. I don't know. Well, I mean, the slicing could have gone around. The slicing could have, could have sliced his auditory nerve, I guess. Yep. Okay. That was hilarious. Well, thank you. Please tell another one. It's not, it's not, I only have that one. It's like, the only, I, you know, I have only what other professors have told me this day in terms of their interactions, interactions with students. Like, I mean, I, you must have, I'm gonna find you you must have a deal with <laughs> You must have a joke about I have a joke? No, I don't really have jokes. <clears throat> Questions? Can we start from day one? Day one? <laughs> How do you factor? <laughs> what is a number? What's a number? Oh. Oh, please don't answer that, please. It's okay, I, I know what a number is. Can we actually go over completing this way? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> Yeah, right to this. All right, so. <clears throat> you know what I always do? I always, um, I always double the first one. So, so the other day, instead of like getting um, 60, I got 60. So let's, let's, let's start out with this one and. Um, I'm also going to answer a couple questions about the, pr this is a parabola, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do completing the square, but I'm also gonna answer um, where's the vertex of the parabola and um, does it have any x-intercepts? If so, where are they? Yeah? X, I heard x plus three, square that, Mi minus nine. Let's right, so that right there, that's it. That, that, that's completing the square. <clears throat> okay, we won't answer anymore. Hey, don't answer anymore. Explain it. In what sense? What did you just that was real fast. I took this number divided and divided by two and added it here. So like generically speaking, if you have x squared plus bx plus c, you take x plus b over two, you square it, and then you subtract whatever that number is squared plus c, like generically speaking, generically speaking, that's the completing the square step. <clears throat> it's, it's just that as long as the leading coefficient's one, if the leading coefficient is not one, it gets uglier. Let's, let's hold off on that until the next, let's finish this one and then we'll do the uglier one, okay? And so as I was just being told, that's actually minus seven, right? And what does that tell us? Already we can figure out where the vertex is. Vertex at, where was it? Minus three minus seven, that is correct. There you go. 
And can we factor this over the real numbers? Yes, yes we can. So what we do is we look at this as, well, I'll just write it out, x plus 3 squared minus the square root of 7 squared. Think of it that way. So then my pattern that I'm looking at here is a squared minus b squared, which is a plus b times a minus b. So you asked me to go back to day one. There it is. That was day one. Here, I'm thinking of a as being x plus 3. I'm thinking of b. Well, I was really thinking of b squared as being 7, which is what told me to make b equals to the square root of 7 for the sake of my you know, thinking. And then, so here it is, um, x plus 3 plus the square root of 7, x plus 3 minus the square root of 7. And now that, so now it's factored, what are the x-intercepts? So y equals to 0 for x equals to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 7, which means my x-intercepts are at minus 3 minus the square root of 7 comma 0 and minus 3 plus the square root of 7 comma 0. Them's my x-intercepts. And we could graph it, right? We could actually graph it. Maybe I should do that. Good idea. The graph is at minus 3, 7, so... The y-intercept is 2, right? It's got x-intercepts of... So the square root of 7, is that bigger or smaller than 3? Bigger. Hmm. No, it's just, it's just, just a question. So like, here's the way I think about it. Square root of 4 is less than the square root of 7 is less than the square root of 9. But I know the square root of 4 is 2, and I know the square root of 9 is 3. So that tells me the square root of 7 is somewhere between 2 and 3. I mean, yeah, okay, fine. You can use a calculator to figure out what it is exactly, right? 2.1, 2.5? I don't know. Something like that. So my, my point to you is just this. Minus 3 plus the square root of 7, it doesn't make it quite past the, uh, the uh, y-axis, right? It's, it's negative. So the, both of the x-intercepts here are negative. So the graph looks something kind of, sort of, like that. See this, and otherwise I'd be confused. My y-intercept is at, is at 2. So here's minus 3 plus the square root of 7. And this one over here, minus 3 minus the square root of 7. And this is all together, the graph, what is it? Um, y equals 2, x squared, 6x plus 2. So you asked me just to complete the square, but I, I digressed a bit about parabolas. I think that's for a good cause, right? Yeah, it goes through a lot of what's on the test. So, okay, what hap how do we complete the square when it's ugly? Or like, so if, 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 the leading co if the leading term is x squared, we just take half of the x term and and add it, and then subtract, like, like just I did this pattern here, right? We take that, and we, we subtract that, right? If, if, you're, if your leading term is not 1, then you've got to do other things. So like, um, here's another example. You might have f of x equal to, oh, I don't know, 3x over 2x squared plus 5x plus 1. Uh, well, let's say plus... Uh, uh, 50. All right. Then the question is, what's the domain of the function? What's, it, what's its graph look like? Can you graph this? See, because that really boils, I mean, this is a hard, harder question than the ones I've asked typically in here. But the really, the, 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 the bottom line is, how does that denominator come apart, does it? So let's just focus on the denominator. So here, 2x squared 
plus 5x plus 50. So my, my opening move when I've got a, when I've got a um, you know, number out front is I factor that out. So I can just focus on the easier problem of having x squared plus, and then here's the thing. You're like, well, there is no 2 and 5, right? So how do we factor 2 out when there's a 5? We have to write, yeah, 5 over 2. OK, so there's that. Now 2 does factor out of 50. We get 25, right? Great. And at this point, we're back to the problem we already did today. So now we follow the same algorithm we did to start with. We take half of the coefficient of x, and from here, like, the steps are the same. So we take, take half of 5 halves, which is what? 5 fourths, yeah, right. So we have x plus 5 quarters, quantity squared. And then I have to subtract 5 quarters squared. Now 5 over 4 squared is what? Yeah, 25 over 16. So I have to subtract 25 over 16. Did, did, I, did I lose anybody there? You've been lost? No. So all I did there is, you know, 5, five quarters times 5 quarters is 25 over 16. So I'm subtracting. I have to subtract the square of this number. When it's a fraction, I actually have to think about it, right? Back here, 3 squared was 9. It was kind of like yawn, you know? But this actually requires a little bit of thinking. Now, the 25, if you want to like save yourself some writing, the smart move here is to convert 25 to 16ths in this section, in this step, so that then you can combine the like fractions. How many 16ths is 25? Right? Because every 4 25s is 100. Mm -hmm. You need 16 over 16 times 25. Is I think, it's, I think it's 400 over 16. Now, you guys double check me on that. Take your calculator, take 400, divide by 16. If you don't get 25, then, then I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you're right. So then what? Then you can add the fractions, right? Because you need the same denominator here and here. Or of course, you can use the calculator you're allowed to bring to the exam to do that arithmetic for you. But somebody's got to do it. Uh, well, I guess plus 375 over 16. What does this mean? It's prime. it's prime. Yes, it's prime. Very good. So that means that, so thus 2x squared plus 5x plus 50 is prime. What does that mean? That means that it's never zero. What does that mean? So this rational function we're trying to graph right now, right? What are the, how do you graph the rational function? You've got to find the critical numbers, right? What are the critical numbers for my f of x? So as we look at f of x equal to, what was it, 3x? I don't know why I put that 3 there. It's kind of funny. Um, 2x squared plus 5x plus 50. So we did the math. We figured out that that's actually 3x over, you know, 2 times parentheses um, x plus 5 quarters quantity squared plus 375 over 16. Okay, so what do, what do we see from this? This never zero. So it doesn't contribute anything really to the graphing story. Not that much anyway. It does one thing for us. This is a rational function. What's its horizontal asymptote? Is it a proper rational function? What's the deal? Notice that the degree of the denominator is two. The degree of the numerator is one. So we do have horizontal asymptote of y equals to 0. 
We've got that. What is the, uh, what's the, what's the only critical number here? There's just one. And it is not, five, it is not minus 5 fourths. That, that is an interesting number, but it's not a critical number here. It doesn't make the function zero. It doesn't make it undefined. How about, what, I heard, I heard, I think I heard some, some, some whispering over there, maybe. Come on, say it. No? Zero. Zero, yes. Why, why, why do you guys say, why, why zero? Because top. Yeah, because the top is x, right? So that's zero when zero. So that makes the numerator zero. The function has an x-intercept of zero. And so my, my number line for the function here is kind of boring. Here it is. Plug in, uh, plug in one, what do you get? You get three over uh, 57. <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a positive number. Thank you. It's positive over here. You plug in a negative number, you get minuses. And so what's the graph of this thing look like? I don't know if we've ever done an example quite like this. Now I think I think the significance of the minus 5 fourths is like, it's actually like the biggest it gets. So let me try to explain that. If you think about the denominator, like the largest this function is going to get is when the denominator is the smallest it can be, right? That's not quite accurate though, right? Because as the top gets bigger, it does what? That also makes it bigger, right? So you want the, the denominator to be small, but you want the top to be big. And there's just some sort of kind of balancing act between those two directions of making it large. And to be honest, to really sort that out, we need calculus. All right. So fine. I guess I really can't do it justice. But it's, it, anyway, it's got to look something like this. And I suspect, I have a suspicion that this is, you know, around minus 5 fourths. It needs to be 5 fourths. Wait a minute. It's minus 5 fourths over here, yeah. I'm not sure. This could be lumpy. I'd actually have to, I mean, we could throw it in the calculator. I mean, the graphing. I mean, you want to graph it and see what happens? Yes. We could look at it. Let's see how far I'm off. You guys uh, top hat it? What's that? That is my name. Let's see here. So 3x divided by... Oh, goodness, it's really hard to, it's really hard to see it. It's really, that's really, it's, 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 yeah, it's like, it's, I, I, it's very, very flat. In order to see it, I think I'm going to have to like mess with the, formula to make it bigger because come on yeah, yeah. so there's I mean yeah I mean the, my, the shape is right but also if I put this to be like I don't know 30 there you go now you can see it so where exactly is this turning point Ooh, it's actually at minus five so I was a little bit off on that wasn't I and the top point here maybe is it like Five maybe. Usually it puts dots here for interesting points. These are the critical points, either at minus five or five. To figure out why those are at minus five and five, we need calculus. All right. So yeah. No calculus, right? Yes. Yeah. Should we? Should we? Uh, 
should do other stuff before. Yes. I think we should pass the test. We should make yeah. sure that we know everything. Hey, should we, we should we should forget about like logarithms and just just do calculus the rest of it? No. Okay, just, that wouldn't help you actually. After how about on Friday, professor? I'm just messing with you. Okay, so other questions? <clears throat> Oh, what? Oh, ABC. Do you have my paper? My quiz. Oh, it's moving back. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Hey, I'll give it to you later, okay? I'm so sorry. It's good, bro. All right. Um, one, one, other, one other thing. While we've got this, while we've got this in front of us, what if we're asking about y equals to 2x squared plus 5x plus 50, right? Factor over c, how does that go? Can you do that? See, we, we've got 2 times the completing the square steps we just went through, 5 quarters squared, right? Plus 375 over 16. Complex numbers? Yeah. So 375 over 16, we can rewrite as 375, well, over, over, yeah, I mean, let me say it this way. We want this to be equal to minus b squared is basically the idea. So if we make b equal to the square root of minus 375 over 16, then we're, we're where we want to be. That would make b equal to like, you know, i times the square root of 375 over 4. And so I can look at this as 2 times x plus 5 quarters squared minus i squared of 375 over 4 quantity squared. The point is, I can rewrite plus something as i times the square root of something squared, because i squared is minus 1. This is the trick, right? And so once I do that, then I'm back to the difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. And that's 2, x plus 5 quarters um, plus i root 375 over 4 x plus 5 quarters minus i root 375 over 4, you know? And there you go. This is how it factors over the complex numbers. Another question that we should ask, what's the vertex of this parabola? So this is how it factors over the complexes, right? Factoring over complexes. Yeah. Why don't you break down the 375 to the number uh, in front of the square root, the number inside? Oh, I, don't, I just don't care. I mean... You wouldn't care at all for anything? I mean, you can care about that because it is 25 times something, so I can like, pull a 5 out of that. It's what? It's 5 root 15, is it? You shouldn't care about it? Well, we can care about it when it's an issue, but here, I mean, here, this is a perfectly good answer. I mean, sure. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, you can take 375 and further break that down. So that's like the square root of um, 15 times 25, right? And um, I know it's 15 times 25 because I just did 16 times 25 was 400 over there. And, and so that's, you know, square root of 15 times square root of 25, which is, sure, it's 5 root 15. But I don't think writing that as 5 root 15 really adds much to the understanding of this problem. It's just, we're, we're taught that we have to do that in, like, lower level math. Why? Because the book says to do it, right? And because the answer keys have numbers written this way. And because it's something, it's a skill that you can, you know, assimilate. But does it matter? I mean, is this a different number? No, it's not a different number. And I certainly don't take points off if you write it like this rather than writing like that, you know? 
Um, unless I say to sim unless I uh, unless unless it keeps you from making an algebra step. Here's a place that would kept you guys from making an algebra step. I'm pretty sure I had somebody's quiz. Maybe not in here, but somewhere. I had somebody do this. All right, so like x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. And if I remember right, this person did something like this. x plus the square root of 4, x minus the square root of 4 over x plus 2. And they just left it like that. So I can't universally say it doesn't matter to simplify square roots. There are places it matters. Here it matters. Because if you understand the square root of 4 is 2, <laughs> then this and that are the same thing. And so there's a reduction here. So it matters in as much as it keeps you from seeing when two things are the same. But I don't think that's an issue for like just factoring over the complexes. I don't think that's a concern of ours here. Um, but it, that's a good question. So my question for you though, as I was asking, where's the vertex for this one? This is a parabola, right? Y equals to a quadratic is a parabola. Where is the vertex? Minus, minus uh, four-fifths, not quite. Hmm. So how about we, we go back up to this step right here, right? This is equal to what? This is equal to two times x plus 5 quarters squared, and then multiply 2 through, we get plus what? 375, not over 16, but over 8, yeah? Because 2 over 16 is 1 over 8. And now that I have that, I can read the vertex from that. The vertex is at yeah, negative 5 over 4 comma what, comma, 375 over 8. Because um, 2 times 375 over 16 is 375 over 8. Why is it not affecting the, the 5 fourths, though? The 2, if you multiply the term? I mean, how do you want me to answer that question? Uh, there's a lot of different ways we could answer it. Here's one way we could answer it. If you think graphically about a, a parabola like this, right? Here's the vertex at h comma k, right? The equation is y equals to a times x minus h squared plus k, right? What happens when you multiply this function by a constant factor c? What happens when you stretch the parabola by c? Multiply this by c. So CY, what happens? You get CA, X minus H squared, plus CK, right? So where's the new vertex of the stretched one? Well, it depends on the nature of things, but let's suppose, for instance, that C is greater than 1. Then what happens is it's more negative, right? It's more like this. It's like... More like that. So the, the new vertex is at h comma ck. So when we multiply a parabola by a number, the, uh, the x coordinate of the vertex stays put, but it moves the, it can move the vertex up or down if the vertex, so like, so that, that in some sense is the answer to your question. Like the two is not symmetrical and it's dealing with this term and that term. Because where the vertex is depends on how you can factor, you know, how you complete the square. It's x plus that number squared minus that number is the location of the vertex. Multiplying this by 2 doesn't change that. If I could multiply this by 22, it would still be at minus 5 fourths. It would just mean that over here I have 22 times 375 over 16 for the y coordinate of the vertex. So it's, it's you know, it is asymmetrical in the way the number deals with the, the h versus the k. Because of this, if you want to look at it geometrically, you could look at it like that. But Listen, it always goes back to this, guys. We're comparing 
we're comparing the formula for the parabola to this basic template, right? A times x minus h squared plus k. This has vertex at where? h comma k, right? So you can always kind of go back to that if you want. I bet some of you need to see more long division, right? Yeah. And factoring. Should we try one of those? Or synthetic division? Get out. <laughs> I'll kill you. How dare you? Smell the perfume on the tutor all over you. Was it? <laughs> Are we going to use that at all in this course? Are you going to use synthetic division? Yeah. No, synthetic division uses you. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, I'm, let me make up something. All right. Here we go. Ah, it's pretty, pretty hideous. I suppose we have f of x equals to x to the power 5 minus 2x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 8x squared plus 31x minus 30. I feel like you guys need work, need more practice on the complex zeros there. Am I wrong? Probably not. Problem. So I give you that f of 2 plus i is equal to 0. And I will also tell you that f of 1 is equal to 0. f of 1 being 0 is easy enough to check, right? 1 minus 2 minus 8 plus 8 plus 31 minus 30. If you keep track of it, that's 1 minus 2 is minus 1, minus 8 is minus 9, plus 8 is one, uh, minus 1, and then plus 31 is plus 30, and then minus 30 zero. So 0. So f of 1 is 0, all right? So these are, these are the, you know, hints. And then the, the, the uh, instructions here are factor f of x completely. All right. So if we're going to use the complex zeros theorem, what does it tell us? The conjugate's also zero. That's true. Let me, I'll restate, I'll, let me restate it again here. Here's the theorem. Theorem was this. F of alpha plus I beta equals to zero if and only if x minus alpha quantity squared plus beta squared factors f of x. So this one, I have what? I mean, I have f of 2 plus i, right, equal to 0. So I look at alpha equals to 2, beta equals to 1. So this means that my factor is x minus 2 squared plus 1 squared, also known as x squared minus 4x um, plus 4 plus 1. Or if you like, this is what? x squared minus 4x plus 5. That means we have that prime factor of the polynomial. So what do we do with that? Well, nothing yet. What else do we know? So we have, yeah, x squared plus 4x, excuse me, plus 4x, so I meant minus 4x, right? Plus 5, 
and what's this tell me? X minus 1 is also a factor, right? So if, if these are both factors, then when you multiply them together, it's still a factor, right? So multiply this and that. What's that give us? Well, it gives us x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x. What I do there, guys, is I multiply this x by all of it to get the first three terms. Then what I do as I multiply the minus 1 times all of it to get the last three terms. And then, of course, we collect like terms, yeah? So what's that give us? It gives us x cubed minus 5x squared. Plus 9x. Yeah, plus 9x, thanks. Minus 5. So that apparently is a factor of f of x. How do you factor that out of f of x? By long division, right. So we take our x to the fifth minus 2x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 8x squared plus 31x minus 30. And we divide this into it, right? Now, did I, did I ask a question this hard on the quiz? No. no, but all of the things I'm doing here are relevant, right? Yep. Um, when taking uh, f of 2 plus i, mm -hmm. when you're turning that into x squared minus 4x plus 5, yep. It's the it's the alpha versus minus alpha, isn't it? Yeah, this is. When you're squaring i to you know turn it into a negative one, I see that like when you ah x thus x squared minus four x plus four. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, it is true, and maybe this is a nicer example. X minus two squared plus one squared, right? Is x minus two squared? minus i squared, which factors to x minus 2 plus i times x minus 2 minus i, which gives you, you know, x equals to 2 plus or minus i as zeros. These things are true, but they're also somewhat irrelevant to the problem at hand, right? Okay, so. Okay, so then how do we do this long division? How do we start? We need x squared, very good. Then I have to multiply x squared through this. So I get x to the fifth minus 5x to the fourth and um, plus 9x cubed minus 5x squared. You know, I always write parentheses and put the minus out here. The handout I gave to you guys distributes the minus through, so beware of that as you're looking at the handout, right? The handout does this minus distributing automatically. It's built into the thing. Okay, so we get minus 2 minus and minus 5, which is minus 2 plus 5. So that's 3. Yeah, 3 x. Let me change colors here. Three, yeah, 3 x to the fourth minus 17 x to the third. Um, yeah, plus 13 x squared. Yep, yeah, then bring them down. Okay, so next up we need plus 3x, yeah? And so we get 3x to the, oh, sorry, I changed colors again here. Um, 3, 3x to the fourth minus 15x cubed. 3 times 9 is 27 plus 27x squared. Uh, then minus 15x. Take the difference here once more, canceling minus 2x cubed, all right? Minus 14x squared. Uh, 
All right. So what's up next here? feels wrong. Where I mess up? You're just, you're just saying that. I mean, I respect it, but I do feel like you're just saying that. What's that? I should get zero here in the next step I haven't written yet. I don't feel like I'm getting it. So it goes like, next I write minus two, right? And then... The thing is, that's going to be giving me a minus 2x cubed. And I, 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 should have, I should have a 10 here. How, how did I get that 20? Where did that 27 from? I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting a remainder of zero. There's something wrong. The problem wrong? The wrong numbers, Matt. No, I don't think the problem's wrong. What's I just did it. The one that you're dividing by, is that incorrect? Just a second. X squared plus 4X. Oh! When you do 31 minus My bad. Uh, it's fine. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> That's fine. I got, I got lots of points. You can take some. You guys give me plenty of points so far this semester. I got plenty to give back. Let's see your minus 18. Minus 18x. I mean, I wish I didn't have so many points. So your plus 10. I would be delighted to have less points. Um, so look, this means something. And what it means is that something I've written here is not true. So we got minus 4x squared. Um, but a bit of it, a bit of it, a bit of plus, um, fi oh, goodness gracious, 50 plus 14, 64, uh, minus 40, right? And that's the remainder. What does this mean? That means that this, okay, so what that means is that this, not a factor. Okay, so what, 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 what got lost in translation for me? as I was going from the problem I made up to the problem I put on the board. Uh, it's really simple, actually. So I was, uh, the problem I designed for you guys, I had x squared plus 4x plus 5 as a factor. That corresponds to not having f of, f of 2 plus i being 0. That corresponds to f of, so if I, if I told you f of, minus 2 plus i equals to 0. That would, this is true. This is true. This right here is false. We did, we did check the f of 1 being 0, right? That is, in fact, true. x minus 1 is a factor here. But, um, yeah. Hey, let's, let's work through it again. In fact, let me tell you this, f of 1 equals to 0, and you can check it out, f of 2 is also equal to 0. All right? It's true. And I think if you look at it, f of 3 is also equal to 0. That's impossible. <laughs> if you plug those numbers in. I'm, I'm telling you, so this means that, there, in fact, there is an x minus 1 factor, there is an x minus 2 factor, there is an x minus 3 factor. So if you multiply these, it pretty much was. Multiplying this, I mean, I had a simpler version of this, x squared minus 5x plus 6 
which is x cubed minus 5x plus 6, uh, fx here, 6x minus x squared plus 5x minus 6, which is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. All right, so this allegedly is a factor. This should hopefully be a factor of f of x. Let's work it out. Let's do the long division. We've got, uh, the long division we did wasn't wrong. It's just not helpful. 2x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 8x squared plus 31x minus 30, all right? I want to divide this cubic into that. How's it go? So we start out with x squared, right? Wait, where, so where'd you get the f of 1, 2, and 3 from? Is that just like given to us? Hint. Yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, that's how I made the problem up, so I knew that those are true. I just wanted to come at this problem from a different angle. Rather than giving you the complex zero, let's suppose I give you three real zeros, what could you do with those? Each real zero gives you a real factor, and you can divide by them. By the so we get x squared, we get x cubed, minus 6x to the fourth, um, plus 11x cubed, minus 6x squared. Take the difference. This gives us 4x to the fourth minus 19x cubed um, plus 14x squared. Then I do what? I do plus, <laughs> plus 4x. So that gives me 4x to the fourth. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 11 is 44. And then 4 times 6 is minus 24, minus 24 x. All right. And yeah, to be fussy, I should have probably brought down the 31 x, right? It's going to matter in the next step. Here we go. So what do we get? The 4 x squared is cancel. Um, that gives me 5 x cubed um, minus 30 x squared. What's 31 plus 24? Plus 55. Plus 55x minus 30. So what do I do next? Plus what? Plus 5. So that gives us 5x cubed minus 30x squared plus 55x minus 30. The remainder is 0. That's better. Which means what? This means altogether that our polynomial, our fifth order polynomial f of x, if I can go back up to the top here, guys, if you don't mind. If I go back up here, <laughs> how does it factor? It factors as x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. This time I gave you a hint that they were there, right? What's left over? x squared plus 4x plus 5. Can that be factored? This cannot be factored, right? But we can complete the square on this piece. What is it? x plus, yeah, x plus 2 squared plus 1. So there you go. That's completely factored over r. And what's, what are the zeros? The complex zeros are what? f of minus 2 plus or minus i is equal to 0. So my original hint was wrong, right? Because I, I just forgot about the minus in my translation of the problem. And I'm sorry about that. Um, but I hope we all learned something from it. Right there, right, um, when you start first starting factoring, is that this was do x to the fifth, right? x to the third. Where? So you see where you first wrote my long division? Where you first wrote x to the third, is that supposed to be the fifth? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll see you guys when? Wednesday. 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 Woo! Hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. How do we know when the sign flip theorem works and it doesn't work? It always works. What do you mean, does it work? When did it never not work? 